About an hour passed while I was in Sunspot's room, laying on her bed looking up at the boards that made up the ceiling. Four hooves behind my head, hind hooves crossed over each other, leaving me alone with my thoughts. During that time, I felt the ship come to life and start moving again. I had no idea if Gunny was still captain or if Sunspot took over since he couldn't be trusted at the moment. If it wasn't for Aura pissing me off like she had, I would have been more worried about the fact that Gunny betrayed me. If it was right, I didn't care much right now. If the Enclave showed up to attack, then fine. I really didn't care anymore. That thought led to more negative ones, however. Over the past couple of weeks, I had mostly forgotten about the Enclave with everything else going on. Dad was the leader in Stratus and Nimbus right now, so if I chose to believe that meant I didn't have to worry about them much. I guess it was a foolish thought, because Winter Frost and his bitch sister had it out for me for what? I still had no idea, though I'm sure I'd find out sooner or later. That also made me realize something. It always led back to the Grand Pegasus Enclave. My distant grandfather helped build them. My family was part of them. They'd been hunting us for years now. They were the reason Silver was dead. They took my best friend away from me. They were the ones who kept the rest of the wasteland hidden underneath a blanket of clouds. My whole life was fucked because of that one entity. Why couldn't my father do something about them? Why did they care so much about my fucking family? Why, why, why? That was the problem. I was left with more questions than answered. And the sad part was, the Enclave wasn't even my biggest problem. Just the biggest pain in my ass right now. I still had to deal with Aquila, who still hadn't spoken a single word to me since she came out of her little funhouse of pain. I still needed to find Wolfsbane and deal with him before he had time to act on whatever plans he had, and to pay him back for killing box tape and cartwheel. I needed to fix Mom's memories. That was going to be hard, but I knew there had to be a way. Now I had to deal with what I saw within that orb. I had no idea what was going, I was going to do with all that information. How the hell did Night Stalker know about me 200 years in the past? Well. 160 or so years, but still. He said I was the one who would break this curse on the family. Right now, I don't know what that means or how to deal with that. I have way too much to deal with. That doesn't include listening to a stallion who died a long time ago. A stallion who started so much pain in the pl I was in now. As I sat here thinking to myself, I realized there was something more I wanted to do. Something that I wished I knew how to fix but knew I never would be able to. I wanted to find a way to fix my uncle. Out of all the ponies in my family and my past, he'd always been the rare for me. He gave us his body to help me, and now he was stuck in a darkness. He'd done a lot of bad things over the years, but I could see in his eyes when I talked to him about it. He truly felt remorseful for all the pain he'd caused. He deserved a normal life. One where he could experiment again, where he could love again, maybe find a mare that made him happy. He'd paid his debt to me a long time ago. Even if he did kill Silver, I didn't blame him for his moment of weakness against the darkness. Before I went into that crystal to free him, I wouldn't have had it in me to forgive him for what he did to her. Now I knew what darkness was like, and I'd only spent a few seconds in there. Either way, I wanted to help my uncle. I vowed that one day I would. I had a mental list and I needed to start checking things off. First order of business, free myself from Aquila. Second, kill Wolfsbane. Third, destroy the Pegasi and Stratus, or wherever they were so they'd stop hunting me. Fourth, destroy the rest of the Sins. Five, stop or destroy Falling Shadows for good. Easy enough, right? Yeah, I thought so. I'm so fucked. A knock came at the door, followed by Aura's voice, saying, Shadow, can I come in? Her voice sounded light, almost like she was scared of me blowing up again. I don't know, can you? Even though once my anger was gone, there was still a little detest in my voice. I turned my back towards the door. The door opened, and Aura walked in, closing it behind her. Her eyes were downcast as she said, I owe you an apology 
for how I acted before and for attacking your friends like I did. I shrugged, back still turned. I could understand what you were doing when you were attacked. You heard something about Captain Gunny betraying us and acted on that. I would have done the same, I said, waving a hoof in the air as I spoke. Still, sorry for what I did, she said, still standing by the door. I looked over at her inside, not fully turned around. Let's just drop it, okay? Yeah, you did something stupid, and so did I. Let's just move past that. Come over here and lay with me, please. I said, finally turning over onto my back again. She let herself smile, then came over to the bed. I scooted over so she could lay next to me. Finally, after what sounded like ages, I pressed my face into Aura's chest and felt her talons wrap around me in a tight embrace. For a while, we just stayed like that, just enjoying the feeling of being with one another again. Finally, I heard Aura say, I fought Aquila. As she said that, a flash of memory kicked in. I saw myself, or maybe Aquila, facing off against Aura. A flash of green as Aura attacked her. A laugh, shouting, and for a moment I saw Aura's face change into that of an older male griffin in armor that I'd never seen before. And then I was back in the small room, the memory slipping away slowly, but the face of that griffin never left. I shook my head, then said, What happened? How did you survive? She let me go and sat up a little as she spoke. I went off of a hunch. I don't know if I was right or not, but I had a feeling that you were still inside of her, and that she wouldn't be able to hurt me because you wouldn't let her. That was stupid of you. You could have been killed. I said, a little shocked she'd gone against a being like Aquila. Maybe, but I was right. I mean, she was able to fight me to a point. But she never put as much power into her attacks as I knew she could. And she couldn't kill me. So I was right that something deep down, you were keeping her in control a little bit. She said. I shook my head. That wasn't me at all. I had no idea what was going on outside the cage she'd locked me up in. It must have been something else. Maybe it had something to do with that vision she saw? I mostly said the last part as an afterthought. The memory was almost gone now, but that griffin's face was still there. And I knew that stopped her from using a powerful spell on Aura. Aura looked over at me. What vision? I just had a small flash of memories while she was in control. It's slipping away, though. But I do still remember that while she fought you, she saw you change into another griffin. He was older, battle-scarred, and... Oh, he had said something. But all I got was a name. But even that's slipping away. And I said, That's kind of fucked up, honestly. She said. No, she's probably just crazy. Still, at least you were able to get control again. If it wasn't for that, she probably would have killed your parents and a few more of your friends. Miles went wide. What happened? Is my mom okay? My dad? No one told me anything about what's going on, or what happened. Yeah, every pony's fine. No casualties in our small group. Can't say the same about Stable 28, though. She did a lot of damage while she had control over you. You heard about Stable 28, right? Aura said, looking sad. Not a lot. Bite didn't go into detail. I said. We got the story from Milkshake. I ran into her while I was leaving New Pegasus. Apparently, she didn't come into the stable to kill any pony right away. She attacked two guards that wouldn't let her pass, then went into the atrium. She talked with Milkshake and told her to let her pass so she could find something she was looking for. Milkshake decided to attack her, and that was all it took for Aquila to go postal. Nora said quietly. I felt my heart skip a beat as I let the information process. Finally, I asked, What else happened? Or aside, we only found a few things before we had to leave. But for most of the time, she was using your body she kept to herself. At least she did after Stable 28. But we heard that she was sighted meeting with the Romans the next day. She was also spotted talking to a few ponies and zebras throughout the area. Your mother said one pony she was spotted with was a synth from the Ministry. Though she's not sure if it's one of the directors or a rogue. 
All we know is that she was planning something and setting something up. The last thing she did before she vanished, for good, I assume because you were getting control, was to find your mother in Frosty Summit. We still don't know what she wanted there, but she did attack the place. No thanks to Violet and the others, she didn't kill any pony. When was that? I asked. The day before you contacted us? It was around sunset, not long after I attacked her myself, she replied. So then, right before I got control, I said. I think she left because of me. I came too not long after that. Aura shrugged. It doesn't matter now. All we need to worry about is getting you home. She paused for a moment, then asked. What's she doing now? Inside your head, I mean. No idea. I know she's still there because I can feel her, but only if I try really hard. She hasn't really spoken to me since I woke up again, but my magic's also been very weak. I can't even get my teleportation to work right now, and normally that's easier for me to do. I think she was getting really weak while she had control for me. Or teleporting all the way across the wasteland might have done it. I'm not sure, though. Anyway, she's keeping herself to herself now, I said. Well, that's a relief. I wasn't sure if she was going to try and take over again sometime soon, Nora said, lying back and covering her eyes with a talon. Listen, next time you feel like you need to do something like shooting yourself to kill Aquila, can you at least give me a heads up? I laughed a little. I'll do my best. The only, if you promise that you won't freak out, though I'm sure I won't be trying that again, the good Aquila told me it wouldn't work. Something to do with her being able to sense it and being able to stop me. And that's why she took over in the first place. She was trying to stop from <coughs> killing us. She looked over at me and opened her beak. The good Aquila? I waved a hoof. I'll explain another time. It's too much right now. I felt Aura pull me closer as she said, What happened to you? You said something back on the deck about killing friends. Were you able to see what was going on while Aquila had control? As she spoke, I had a quick flashback of Mom's head rolling from her body, blood from Wingnut, misery slicing through Solstice's neck like it was paper. I shook myself, saying, No, I didn't. What I saw was a lot worse. Ari Callus said something about you being trapped in a dream state, but he didn't say what happened in there. He said, he was pulled out by Aquila before he had to see me do what was required for me to get free. Again, I saw more of what happened in that cage. Vervain, dead on the floor, just outside table 28. My cold suffocating under the pillow. My filly's scream of terror as Wind Thrasher killed her. I... I don't want to talk about it right now. My body shivered intensely, pulling myself tighter against Aura. That's fine. But sooner or later, you're going to have to. It's the only way you're going to get past what happened, she said. I know. But not right now. I can't. I just can't. I said, doing my best to forget what I saw in that place. Anyway, what's the plan now? What happened to Gunny? Aura sighed. That sunspot, I think her name was, is going to take over right now. But the pirate's still the captain. Solstice is keeping an eye on him. The other, whatever they are, Elliot, I think, is watching over the Enclave ships. That's one thing I don't understand. Why is the Enclave after me anyway? I thought my dad put a stop to that a couple weeks back, he asked. He did, but he can only control the two cities. Word is that there are other Pegasi who want you dead. They've been trying to get help from the other Cloud Cities from the sound of it. All we know is that Winter Frost is the one leading those other Pegasi. From what I can tell, your father's family isn't liked much by a couple of factions in the clouds, Nora said. I'm not surprised. From what I've learned about my family on my dad's side, they weren't well loved after Night Stalker left. I think my dad's the first one in the family since Night Stalker's son to have a role in leadership like he does. Also, he did set up to kill the other three High Council ponies and let me take the blame for it. Maya said with a sigh. Good parenting there. Or I chuckled a little. Yeah, at least your parents didn't kill each other. That's not funny. 
I said. She looked down. Yeah. I know. I wasn't even thinking about what happened in Crimson Canyon. Honestly, I've been doing my best to forget about it. Speaking of the Red Talons in your old home, have you heard anything about what's been going on with them? I asked. She nodded slowly. Yeah. My dad's the new leader. He only goes by Archer now, and he's been trying his best to rally any griffins that can hunt down some pony. Not you, though. He's not after you at all. Honestly, ignoring most of New Pegasus and letting the Shadow Talons take over a lot of the Red Talons' territory. That's strange. Why would he take over the Red Talons and let the territory be taken away by a new Talon group? I asked. She shrugged. No idea. Uh, it could be that a good number of the Red Talons either died, fled, or joined up with my group. A few joined the Unchained Talons after my mom died. For the most part, they're all just doing their own contracts and not caring much about where they go. Gina and my dad are after a pony, though. Fletch heard about it from a spy we have in the Unchained. You have a spy in their ranks already? Yeah. Groger, she said. Groger? I thought he escaped with us when the Unchained attacked. He did. But when I, he heard that I wanted a spy working with them, he volunteered. How the hell did you get that to work? Wouldn't your father know Groger was up to something? He has to know that you'd try something like that and use Groger. Ah, it wasn't that hard, to be honest. All he had to do was go to Crimson Canyon and give my dad information on the Shadow Talons. He told him where we were staying and using as a base. Told him about me being gone and information the Unchained would think they'd want to need. Aura said. They believed him and that he wanted to be with the Unchained. I think he also said something about how Pluck tried to join the Unchained and that Fletch killed him for his betrayal and he wanted revenge for his friend's death. You let the Unchained have information about the Shadow Talons? That seems like a stupid plan, I said. She laughed. You'd yeah, think so, but it truly doesn't matter. Sooner or later, he would have found out all the information we let Groger give to him. So far, he's doing well spying for us. No, it's only been a week or so, but I'm sure he has nothing to worry about. Gene and my dad are too busy to pay Groger too much attention. Still, I'd hate if something happened to him because of this. I thought he wanted to prove himself to Fletch or something. Why would he do something so dangerous? Nora laughed again. I keep forgetting how much you missed. Fletch and Groger are together now. He saved my sister's life during the attack, and she's always had a soft spot for him, even if she never admitted it. She called him fuck most of the time. Pluck and fuck? That's what I always heard from her? How is that having a soft spot for him? I asked, utterly confused. You've seen how my sister treats me, and I'm her favorite. Fletch has never been good with emotional stuff. She paused for a moment. Well, neither have I. But Fletch takes it to a whole new level. When she doesn't know what to do, when she's feeling a strong emotion, she calls the others names or attacks them or duels them. It's how she shows her love. Griffins are fucking weird. That's all I can think, as I asked. Okay, so we're together now. Um, are they getting married then? Aura laughed again. Shadow, I told you before we don't have marriage. Griffins enter a life bond. It's... Like marriage, but once you're in a life bond, you can't just break it because you're not getting along or you found something else you like. Griffins take a lot longer to enter one most of the time, because to us, it's a commitment for life. I felt myself blush as she said that. And then I asked, What about us? Is that what we have? Laura blushed too as she leaned back in the bed and looked up at the ceiling again. Well, no, not yet at least. I know that there's something about you, Shadow. Something deep inside that tells me that you're the one I'm meant to be with. But you're a pony, and life bonds with a different species that aren't griffin have never happened before. That, at least, that I know of. Oh, so because I'm a pony, we could never have something like that, huh? I asked. She punched my foreleg. I didn't say that. I said it's never happened before. Not that it can't happen. The only reason I haven't asked you to make a life bond with me is simple. Normally, griffins have known each other for years before they make the bond. 
I've only known you for at most three months. Now don't get me wrong, I love you more than I have compared to others. I want to make the life bond with you, but at the same time, you're still young. I'm five years older than you, and I've had time to grow and mature. I want you to be a little older and know you're ready to make the choice. Once you are, then I'll most likely ask you to become my life partner. But until then, I want to get to know you better, and if I was to ask, I want it to be when we aren't fighting for our lives. What if something happens to us before then? I asked, echoing the same thing she asked me back at the kingdom. And then we'll have a great time together, and our love will never change, no matter how we decide to do in the future, Nora said, leaning down and kissing me. Her kiss's effect on me was wonderful. For the first time since I'd taken control of my body again, I felt like myself. There was something special about Aura, something I'd known was there for a long time, even before the dance in the kingdom. I loved her more than I could put into words, and if she'd asked me right now, I would make the choice to spend my life with her, no matter how long that might be. I also understood what she meant when she said she wanted to wait. I was a young mare. I hate admitting it due to the circumstances of my life, but she wasn't wrong. I knew that in a few years I could decide that I didn't want to spend my life with Aura. It was possible that something could push us apart, or that she found a griffin that she could fall for, or, in my case, another pony. If in the coming years, if I lived that long, I found that Aura was the one I was meant to be with, and we could take the next step in our relationship. For now, I'd respect her choice and just love her as much as I could. I pulled away and smiled. Thanks for coming to get me. She laughed. What else was I gonna do? I'm just glad you're not angry anymore. I shrugged. Well, I had my reasons for it, and you know why. I know I messed up and all, but still. Next time, just yell at me or something. Don't ignore me. Duly noted, Aura said with a grin. Next time you decide to lie to me or leave me another note like that, I'm just gonna punch ya. Maybe with some brass knuckles. Make it interesting. I think that's domestic abuse, I teased. She shrugged. Maybe to a pony, but to a griffin it's a sign of how much we care for one another. Also, it can't be domestic if we don't technically have a home. Oh, is that what it is? Then Fletch must really love Groger and you, I said with a hearty laugh. Yep, was all Aura said to that. Then she laid back down. You know, sometimes I wish I wasn't a griffin. That caught me off guard. What do you mean? Being a griffin is awesome and all. And don't get me wrong, but there's so many rules and expectations in my race. Ponies have an easier time with most things. I mean, look at you. You can choose who you want to love and who you want to be with, no matter what. And I was kicked out of my home for loving a pony, just because it was against a stupid old rule. I wouldn't say us ponies have it easy, but I see what you mean. But not every pony has it as easy as I do. Look at Stardust and Windthrasher, I said with a laugh. Or looked back over at me. What about him? Oh, come on. You can't tell me that you haven't noticed how they look at each other? I said, surprised. I've seen Wind Thrasher flirt with him a lot. I mean, she's not really subtle about it. But Stardust? I don't know. Either he's playing hard to get, or he's a moron, or he just doesn't see her the same way that she sees him. Aura said. There's also just the random chance that he's really shy and has a good way of hiding when he's she's getting all flirty. This requires extensive study. I should send him to Dr. Cottage. He's got a way of getting to some pony's head. You may not see it, but I do, I said. Stardust does look at her when she's not paying attention. He steps up to defend her, too, even if it's from herself. I don't know how deep his feelings go, but I can tell that there's something there. He's just really good at hiding it, I think. Also, don't send him to Cottage. You guys pretty much just started getting along. I don't want him fighting with you because Cottage got into his head and wanted to be entertained by conflict. Nora took a moment to think, and then shrugged. I guess you're right. Could you imagine what their foals would look like? What if Wind Thrasher couldn't even have foals? 
I don't know. I mean, they could be cute. And I could see it now, a bunch of little stardusts with bat wings and goofy grins flying around. And I said, laughing. The two of us spent the next ten minutes talking about a union between our two friends and the foals that we could have. As we talked, I did think about Windthrasher and if she really could have foals. Her body had been altered by Dr. Cell. Her DNA was mutated and spliced with not one, but two creatures. I'd have to ask her sometime, once she was finished biting my head off, that is, about if she could bear children or not. Apart from her transformation, I knew she was an older mare, too. I didn't know how much about how old you could be and still have foals, but when Thresher was a young filly when her stable was abandoned, she spent twenty years in there before I found her. So she would be in her late twenties, maybe early thirties now? I'd have to ask her some day about that, too. Maybe that was why Stardust hadn't said anything about how he might feel about Windthrasher. He was around Aura's age. Maybe he just thought Windthrasher was too old for him. If that's the case, then Stardust really is an idiot. Or shallow. Okay, it's settled. I'm going to confront him about it when we get back. Thinking hard over there, huh? Aura asked. I blinked, then shook my head. Not wanting to bring up my thoughts to Aura. At least not yet. So I smiled, saying, A little. So anyway, you were saying something about not wanting to be a griffin? Aura waited a moment, just glaring at me as she shrugged. Yeah, like I said, I like being a griffin, but sometimes I do wish I was a pony. It would make life easier. If you say so. I wish I could shoot rainbows out of my horn, but that's not going to happen. I said with a laugh. Oh, that'd be funny to see. Ah, well, wishing aside, I'm just glad you're safe and that everything is going to be okay now. She said as she got off the bed and went over to the door where she dropped some saddlebags. Oh, yeah, I got your stuff and brought it along, like I said before. Figured you'd like to have your own armor and weapons. Just when things were looking better, the wasteland throws another curveball. I was just getting off the bed to part of my barding when something exploded on the deck. I fell to the ground as the bitter cob lurched to its side a moment later, and I heard gunfire. 